is, there we go. Welcome, this is the Leaders Lab. The theme this month is Beloved Community, and it is the month of February coming up. What I'm going to do first is spend 15 minutes doing an overview of the packet. Many people who join us don't have um, time to review it, and they like to come and do this with me. So this is my highlights, Katie's highlights. And then uh, after that, you can lurk or you can join us for a sharing of challenges, solutions, and takeaways in a about a, a format that we've used over and over and we've had a good time with that. So to dive into beloved community packet for February, I began each lens, each angle with beloved community is. So there are four buckets, four angles, four sessions. Beloved community is where black leaders are honored. And because this is Black History Month, that is what we wanna do. And um, if you could mute yourselves, that would be great. And then second, where love grows beyond boundaries. That's a Valentine's oriented one. The third is where wounds are healed. Beloved community is where wounds are healed. The fourth one is beloved community is where we don't run away when things get hard. I tell you, after doing these, this deep dive into beloved community, I see it in my heart now. I see the wholeness that we're reaching for. And I'm really committed even more after doing a whole month. As you know, Soul Matters does um, one anti-racism session a month generally, but for this month, every single one is teaching us how to deep dive into beloved community and anti-racism work. One of the things that I especially enjoyed discovering was John Lewis's book, uh, it, about John Lewis called Preaching to, to the Chickens. And on our Facebook page, there was a colleague who posted even more information um, about this story and had um, pictures and things of the place where he lived. All right, so there's a lot of rich possibilities there. And since I am a chicken lover, that that became a real find for me. And now to dive in. So the first one where black leaders are honored. I did a program that uses the alphabet. I think that's a very accessible hook to bring the children in. So if you have those little alphabet blocks or you have anything from your refrigerator with alphabet letters on it, use those to teach what an acronym is, and then deep dive into the acronyms of BLUE, B-L-U-U, and DRUM, our Black Lives, uh, other place where there are Black leaders. I mentioned A-R-E, Allies for Racial Equality, just because they're another acronym, that's for white folks. Anyway, that's an angle that I like and I wish I could do it with children, but I don't have a congregation anymore except for you all. So I hope you enjoy that particular angle. The next lesson is about the ripples that are created when love grows beyond boundaries. So this is the Valentine's lesson. Definitely making Valentine's is part of the explore it section. And there's a song by Leah Morris, our commissioned songwriter for Soul Matters, who I love. I just became a Patreon member of her stuff, by the way, and highly recommend it. Um, 
It's called Part of Me. And I suggest using it as a zipper song because she's talking and singing with her children. So she says, mothers, brother, sister, child, all are part of me. And I'm thinking, okay, if I have a different family constellation, let's change it up and make it a zipper song. Mother, mother, family, child. Um, if you have um, bigger and bigger ripples, you might sing neighborhood, you know. So that's my, my little overview for the second, where love grows beyond boundaries. The third session, where wounds are healed, that's the Band-Aid approach where we want, a, what are the Band-Aids that we can put on racism? So for the littlest ones in that pre-K packet, I talk about that in a very simple way. But if your little ones are like the ones I used to work with and my grandchildren, Band-Aids, they're fixated on Band-Aids. So that's a good hook to get into how we can heal the wounds we want to fix it, don't we? We want to fix those alleys. And of course, for the little ones, we say to celebrate our uniquenesses and differences. And another thing we can do to help heal the wounds is to see something that's wrong and say something about it. And there's several different layers for the bigger kids that you can go into. Um, I also wanted to bring into that particular session something that used to be called PDQ. So the hook was, hey, you all know you have an IQ, now we're gonna test your PDQ. And they're like, oh my gosh, what is it? So PDQ is called the play development quotient. Play development quotient sounds really fun. No, I mean really serious, but it's actually fun. So play development quotient, and if you know of kid culture, you know about this, it's who can make a whistle between their um, lips and with their fingers, who can whistle like this, who can, uh, let's see, oh, here's one, who can twist their arms around and do this, right? Who can, what is it, what's another one? Oh, some people can bend their thumbs to touch their arms. So anyway, it's a celebration of differences and the kids really can get into sharing all of the things that they can do with their, who can, you know, some people can curl their tongue. That's the idea of PDQ, play development quotient. And that's for that explore it part that needs to be active. The uh, second thing I wanna mention about the third session is the PBS video. I don't want our families to always be watching videos, but this one was just so perfect for doing beloved community, for doing anti-racism. And it's led by, uh, she looks like she's high school maybe. It's the first youth poet laureate of the, in the country. And she leads this. And then there are sections of, oh, relevant cartoons, and then several families that talk about this with their children. So you'll get a dad and a son talking, or you'll get a, a mother and a child talking about instances of racism and what they've done or that kind of thing. So if you need, this is in the family connections section, if you need a Zoom, I mean, a um, video to share with families who are trying to do racism, whatever level they're on, whatever place in the path they're on for doing anti-racism, I recommend this PBS video. Then the fourth one, which is don't run away when things get hard. Beloved community is don't run away when things get hard. That's where I use the croissant and the bagel analogy. So if we're gonna keep an open mind and be open to new ideas and not um, run away when things get hard, we need to be open like a croissant, you know, they're a crescent. 
not closed like a bagel, which is delicious, <laughs> but it's a closed system. And I first heard that, oh, seven, eight years ago when I was running the GA middle school camp that some of the kids, when we were doing our covenant work, came up with that croissant bagel. And I just love it. I think it's so, so visual. In this last one on Don't Run Away When Things Get Hard, I also bring in the story of the tortoise and the hare. The whole idea that we are mountains, that's what the meditation is. We can be solid, we can be patient, we can be determined. There's the symbol right there. We determine we have strength to do this work and stay as long as it takes to do it. Just like the tortoise, he didn't give up when that rabbit shot in front of him. Um, the, the other piece I want to share with you about don't run away when things get hard. Um, when I was doing what we called spirit jam in my former congregation, we did a Lego jam. Oh, yes. Um, the Lego jam, these chats are popping up and I think it's great. Um, and that was so popular, the parents said, my child said we had to come to church today, back in the old days when we had traditional gatherings, because you called it a Lego jam, and they are Lego maniacs. So let's do a Lego jam, because what does that illustrate? The kids know how hard it is to build with Legos, whether they build according to the pattern, or they build something their own uh, creative idea. They know it's hard, and they know it has to. They have to stick with it if they are going to create something. And I think that's a really good place to transfer that learning. Well, we have to do the same thing with understanding racism. So do a Lego show and tell. I think that would be a fun and attractive uh, pulling in of families. Uh, let's see. Oh, the family connections piece. This is the month when in the old days we used to do, very old days we used to do what was called secret friends. And doesn't that give you chills now when we say it that way? Because that's how, um, that's the kind of language that we know pedophiles groom with. Secret, I'll be your secret friend. Oh, so now we're more aware and very permi various permutations come out. It becomes uh, mystery pals as a nicer way to say it. I see that as something you could really do online uh, pretty easily. Invite the adult pal to send a physical letter and then have the Zoom reveal party together and do breakout rooms of more than just two. You know, we always used to do at a table three or four pairs so that it's not awkward you talking to this rather strange adult. It's, hey, there's a bunch of kids and there's four adults and they're all talking to each other about whatever um, things they have in common. The next thing I wanted to lift up, the final thing for me is I hope that we take advantage as a faith community of doing Valentine's for Meals on Wheels. Think of how isolated these elders are who are getting Meals on Wheels anyway. And think of how our church communities can provide Valentine's to be given to the elders when they get their meal on that day. I really hope that we can do it that way. Um, last little thing for the preschool packet, I lied, it, it, I had one more thing, <laughs> is the use of anti-racism baby again by Dr. Ibram Kendi, wonderful little board book. And what it does is bring the words into the sort of gestalt of the children's awareness. Bring these hard words, they may not entirely understand everything that's going on, but they certainly will start to hear the language, hear the passion and understand those words in context. 
Well, just as promised, that was 15, 20 minutes. So now I'm going to invite us all to share challenges, share opportunities, and finally share any solutions, takeaways you have after this. And since there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10 of us, this is good timing. Um, I'll ask someone to be a timekeeper. All you have to do is hold up your smartphone or whatever and remind the person talking because we love to talk, don't we? That a minute and a half is up. And if that doesn't work, I'll help, help you out too. So a lot of people have stopped their video. So in our listening, maybe they're eating. Well, <laughs> that's fine. Um, is there someone who would volunteer to do this little smartphone? Thank you, Sam. And um, then I'll call on you so that you can share for this minute and a half. We'll first do the challenges that you're experiencing. And this can be challenges with looking at the packet. If you haven't looked at the packet, it can be a challenge you're just experiencing uh, within your congregation doing online RE. Yay. And, and tell you what, we know there's this whole other thing. There's the election, there's the riots, there's the pandemic. I'm trying to move in the middle of this and in, in three weeks, there's my, my father who just fell and broke some vertebrae at age 90. Oh my goodness, all these things. But today we'll share our challenges for Soul Matters RE packet, okay. Uh, it's, it's like, it's, isn't that enough? Wasn't that enough? So anyway, enough of that chatter chatter. Um, the first on my screen is Ashley Hamlin. And if you want to lurk, just tell us you're lurking. That's fine too. Yeah. Katie, Katie, did you say a minute or a minute and a half? Let's do a minute and a half with 10. Okay. Thanks for clarifying that. All right, Ashley, you want to unmute and share any challenges you've been experiencing? Oh, sure. Thanks. Thanks for your description and for the opportunity. Um, I think one challenge I've had is um, we have some new kids uh, that have joined in this year, which is great considering the year we have. Um, but, uh, you know, not all the kids know each other. And so I plan these activities as active as possible games and, you know, based on the lessons you put together. And, um, the and the kids are shy like they they are more hesitant to jump in and do things but um so just trying to kind of create that safe space and warm them up and make them feel comfortable and welcome um so that they um you know and just you know engaging them in the so that they participate. <laughs> good, good, good challenge. Thank you. Next on my screen is Elisa. Welcome. Hi, hi. I am. Um, so I stepped into this role in a very part-time uh, way with a, a just a very few um, kids. It's really two families, and then they're are another two families um and one of which so that are not part of the congregation but one of the families there are three young kids um three five and seven and the mom is just really into it and is able to join they actually do temple on sunday mornings and then come join us but i am um i just feel like the zoom and, and then and one family the older boy um is 14 um so and then we've got a couple of 11 year olds um so really i think where i ended up is to have the three older kids try try to do things with zoom um but really we have just focused on um service projects and i'm just trying to pull in some of the resources and share some of those great they're great video links and some kind of themes and some activities but just um 
you know, having let go a little bit of just trying to have a circle and a meditation. So I just feel like, you know, we got, you know, we're in a little bit, but I'm not quite in a little bit. So. All right. Good, good challenge. <laughs> good. Challenge. Great. Thank you. Next on my screen is Katie Karpman. We better do last name since we have so many Katie's. Um, we're brand new. We've just started this month um, and we're not doing online classes right now. We're just mm -hmm. doing a mail app packet, which is kind of an amalgam of the lessons and some highlights from the soul for home packet with a link to, and now you can go deeper. Um, so we're seeing what's going to work there. Really our struggle has been so many of our parents have said no more zoom. And so it's okay. What are we going to do? That's not the zoom, but they can still feel like somebody's thinking about them and that they're connected and they, they can do a little bit of spiritual growth that is, you know, highly disguised. Nice. Thank you, Katie. Next on my screen is Carla. If you want to join us, Carla. I do. Yes. Sorry for being late. I was coming from another meeting and um, I'm eating my lunch as we speak. <laughs> so that's why I've been off video. But it's great to see everybody. Um, one gift we have is that children are showing up for our classes and especially with the elementary school group, um, Soul Matters seems to be working well for us and having a resource that what's written to be online is a gift. Um, and my challenges are around keeping them active. Um, it's interesting when we try to have them do something physical, the kids kind of sit there and they're reluctant to join in. I think they're used to just sitting and watching, right? Kind of passively almost when they're on Zoom. And so getting them to do, be up and active hasn't worked out well for us. Um, so that's one thing. And I am very interested in doing the mystery pals. So if anybody has some experience with that, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you, Carla. Uh, Sam, you're next on my screen. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, so we had a lot of success back in December about with, with getting families involved, children and youth, getting them excited, or at least if they're burnt out on Zoom, um, giving them a, hey, you're, we, we, we remember you, you're still loved and we're still thinking of you. And it was really successful. And so now our challenge is how do we keep that momentum going? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of brainstorming going on around that and trying to find events or activities that will keep people involved. So we're um, we're already starting on our Valentine's Day activity of, uh, it's more a community activity, but we're really pushing the front, or not pushing, but encouraging the families to get involved of um, making Valentine lawn signs that we're gonna be decorating a bunch of the local area hospitals with. So it's, um, we're really excited about that. And we've got some great energy behind the volunteers, but it's okay. So how do we get people excited? <laughs> About this. How do we keep them coming around? And even if they can't be here every Sunday, if they can, you know, just be aware and be encouraged and not completely drop off from everything. That's, um, yeah, keeping everyone entertained. Yep. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Next on my screen is Katie Golden. Hi. Um, so I, I would say um, my group, it's a youth group. So it's um, eighth graders through seniors in high school. Um, and I would say the main problem um, that I'm having right now is having more than two of our six youth really attend 
um, any group. Um, it's frequently um, two different people that'll be coming. Um, and it's just really hard to feel like there's any sort of consistency um, in the group. Um, and it's, it's like things can't really carry from week to week, um, which is really good when, you know, it's really good that Soul Matters changes week to week um, because it's like you don't need to have things from a week ago really to, to be able to engage. So, so that is good, um, but it just feels so disconnected. Um, because it's, it's almost as if, you know, for example, we have one um, youth who moved to our community post pandemic and you'll never know the end of that story. <laughs> to be continued. Thank you, Katie, very much. Yes. Um, next on my screen is Macy. Hey, so, um, you know, I think when I think about our challenges, it kind of reiterates a lot of everyone else's. And, um, you know, I mean, I think the main challenge and goal is just to keep people engaged, um, our younger kids, especially. The youth, I think I mentioned at the last meeting, our youth have pretty consistently been engaged with our programming. Mm -hmm. But I think the younger kids are experiencing more of the fatigue and burnout. We also have, um, I will say, more kids that were already in home homeschooling before the pandemic. So for them, like doing these Zoom meetings, like and everything else, it's not that much of a change compared to, you know, our, a lot of our younger kids have been in public school and then transitioned to all online. So I don't know, the last children's chapel we had, I, I felt pretty bad a couple of the kids who have been on pretty much the whole time fairly consistently with us like the last two or three times I've seen them they've been just really quiet not saying like they wanted to share as much and I, I get the sense that um you know there's some burnout there just with being in front of screens so much and I, you know I, I of course know that it's going to take like some following up and extra communication with the family to hopefully kind of get a sense of where they're at and what their needs are but yeah um that's pretty much it for me. And I mean, things have been since the holidays on a little bit of a pause too, or we've slowed down a little bit with just some of the planning out because yeah. Yeah. So I'll, okay. I'll, I'll Macy, try. thank you. Good yeah. Good comments. Um, next on my screen is Heather. And Heather's either there she no, Heather's either struggling like I have sometimes to figure this out. Heather will move to Mandy next and see. Hi. There she is. I'm here. Sorry. I'm at work, so I'm multitasking. Yes. Um, and I can't come off camera. I apologize. Um, I'm sorry, just a sec. He, so he'll be right out. Oh, there he's. Um, sorry about that. So um, our struggle just is that we are um, just having a hard time getting kids to come in. Um, we did have to go for, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, we did have to come in for do on Zoom um, for the last two months um, because of COVID, um, but we are trying to do in-person stuff. So we were able to do our holiday bazaar, um, which is when the kids get to do like a shopping for gifts for free. Um, garage sale style and wrap their gifts for their family members so they get free things um and that was our last in-person thing and then this month we did a um movie night online which went really well because we did a studio ghibli movie although it was pg-13 but they seemed to be okay with that um we did try to tie in a lesson with them um for uh connecting it to seventh principle but it was a little over their heads for that so um, but that was okay. Um, and our, I'm trying to think what else. Um, this is a challenge time if you have any. Yeah. Time. So we are trying to use soul matters a little bit, but we're not doing a full <laughs> curriculum. Um, 
but we, I mean, overall, we're just, just kind of trying to keep the kids socially engaged. Um, so that is our challenge. And because we're not trying to push any curriculum right now, we've just given up on curriculum for COVID right now. So um, yeah, well, that's it for us. Great. I'm glad. Thanks for the sharing. You're welcome. And let's see, Mandy, did we? Yeah, let's do Mandy. Hi. Hi. Yeah, so two things. One in particular about next month is um, that in talking with kids about the proposal for the eighth principle, um, we are just trying to toss around developmentally appropriate language mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> wanting to make sure that the thing that we land on is okay with the folks who developed the eighth principle proposal. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a piece that you know we're we're looking at. Um, the other thing for me is what I'm going to call material support. So things like um, slides for the stories that are recommended. Um, I know that many of us are offering packages for our congregations and, you know, I think there's both benefit to the personal touch, but it's very time consuming and there's benefit to the possibility of being able to just like your many other subscriptions say, yes, our congregation would like 15 packets a month please ship to these addresses, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, or even the possibility of maybe some of these folks being on a team that developed packets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Sam, I can't see what you're doing. She's showing is that you time. Okay. Yeah, that was time. Yeah. So yeah, material support. Yes. Boy, Thank I tell you, I found a, a bunch of entrepreneurs who were doing material support for something similar. It was in the uh, actual education realm instead of religious education. And uh, they had like 15 consultants putting together this box that would arrive every, every uh, month. And it was really uh, enlightening to see that it took them 15 consultants and I think it was a $500 subscription. So to do that at the soul matters level, I, I was like, oh yeah, okay. We're doing each of us sending these packets out are doing a pretty good job uh, with what we have currently. Well, excellent. Now what I'd like to do is just briefly mention uh, one little solution which came up and up, and that's engaging kids on Zoom. I took a webinar. Uh, Zoom at, offers free webinars, and it was a motivational speaker, world famous. And the title was specifically Engaging Middle School Students on Zoom. He, he's done this for corporations, but I guess he said this is one of the hardest groups. And he said, I'll share with you, within eight minutes of your presentation, you need to find a way to engage. Uh, he said, 20% is talking heads, you'll get about 20% engagement. If you start using hand motions, like the biggest thing that can happen, maybe you'll get 40%. 60% of engagement happens when you say, okay, everybody, type in the chat box how many of, uh, minutes you think it takes to run a mile. And so that's one of the first things you do right then. And he did this with us. I, I haven't modeled it, I'm, I'm afraid, because I talked straight for 20 minutes with you. Uh, he modeled it with us, and it was truly fascinating to see how there were 2,000 people on that call from Saudi Arabia to Singapore, and people were, by the end, just back and forth, back and forth. It was, it was really fun. So anyway, when we're talking about online engagement for kids, if you can get them into the chat box, or raising their little hand, you know, how you have reactions, or crying, you know, how many people would cry if da, da, da. I think I recommend those little tricks to you. 
All right, now what I'd like to do is do our opportunities, sharing of opportunities. Like if you're doing a mystery pal, this would be time to talk about it for Carla, uh, for another, and let's do this for a minute. And I'll start with Eliza first. Lisa or Eliza? Don't forget you're on mute. I'm, I've just been excited by some of the ideas. Um, I think we are at the point where we're going to continue to try to do these hands-on things. So. Um, thinking about Valentine's for Meals on Wheels, um, we already do a mainspring lunch and um, and the movie night, there has been actually a little bit of discussion about that. I think that's a great way to go. Um, and I've been finding videos. So um, I think that's all I'm gonna share right now. I'm just enjoying listening and finally being able to find a Wednesday when I can connect. Wednesdays are a little hard for me. And as you could maybe tell, I was still involved in something else that was ending at one o'clock when that was when we were starting. Thank you. Thank you. And Ashley is next on my screen. Well, I'm also looking forward to um, looking into writing Valentine's for Meals on Wheels. We do have that in our community and that would be really cool. Um, we are I'm um, going to try to put in our monthly RE mailing packet um, some self-addressed envelopes for um, kids to write to um, those on our caring committees list that they check in on each month. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, Ashley, thank you. Next on my list, jumped up is Mandy. Mandy. Hi, uh... Um, so I was posting in the chat, um, I am taking Elizabeth McCoy's pilot of the Creativity Matters group, and I know a lot of folks are um, thinking about engagement within a Zoom meeting where you've already got the kids there and you really want them to um, hook in. And I will say for us, anything that gets the kids up out of the chair. Um, so a lot of the kind of improv games that have you go get something and come back and talk about it or make up a fake story about it or what have you, um, or, you know, your little ones doing a dance party, whatever, that those have been really successful things for us. Um, the movement piece is really, um, a good thing. Yeah. We hear sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's very interesting. Um, let's do Sam next. And I will give you yours, Sam. Thank you. Um, I would say when it when it comes to engagement, uh, we, whether it's the younger ones or the older ones, we're always just offering opportunities to talk. And especially with the younger ones, when they have opportunity to talk, they're just like, okay, we're in. Um, and our, our middle schoolers, we've, those are two, the two groups that we've had most consistently is our youngest ones and our middle schoolers um, as of lately. And yeah, that opportunity to talk. Introduce yourself. We don't care if you've been here every day since October. Introduce yourself. <laughs> and have a hot topic question and um so that's been working for us and um yeah I I appreciate the um how you're sharing movies uh Heather because that was like hey how are we doing that because I'd love to host a movie night and I like your piece thank you for sharing All right thank you all right Katie Cartman I'm still getting used to all this, y'all, and figuring out how it's going to go. <laughs> all right, Katie's like, yeah, I'm just listening. Uh, Macy. Oops, I, 
I lost hey. There she is. <laughs> um, so honestly, I missed what you said initially that we're invited to share how we're, how we're excited to engage with kids. Is that what you asked? We're doing opportunities. Opportunities. So challenges okay. Sorry. And <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, so as far as opportunities go, I know um, on the 20th, inauguration day actually, we're um, inviting a flooding night with our youth. So, you know, that's going to be hopefully a good, safe, social distance way here in Minnesota to get the kids outside and finally seeing each other. This would be the first in-person thing we've done really with our kids since the pandemic. So that'll be a good opportunity. And then, yeah, I, I mean, I really like some of the ideas shared here today too. I don't really have anything else new, I don't think to share other than the ideas that were already shared here. And I want to say I appreciate it all. It's fun just to create the buzz, isn't it? Next on my yeah. screen, yeah, is Carla. Um, so yeah, we too have found just the time for sharing, just talking has been really important to our kids. And um, the, the middle school has gone away from curriculum completely because we just couldn't keep them focused we were starting to lose people and it had been a very engaged group. So I had a conversation with them, like I invite everybody to come what do we want to do? What do we want to be together? And um, they want to play games. So that's what we're doing. Um, and they're showing up. And this month of imagination, they are playing Dungeons and Dragons with somebody in the congregation who's a dungeon master and was able to plan something that would work for a whole range. We have newbies, a lot of newbies too. We have two kids who are very experienced D&D players. Um, so that's great. That's been really going well. And they also want to do, um, you know, some activities and some of them are willing to lead. So we're going to have somebody do a cooking show with everybody and we can all cook along. Um, so some things like that. So that's an opportunity to have some fun with them and some community building that I'm very happy about and they're invested. So that's been good. Thanks, Carla. Yep, I'm so glad to hear that. Um, let's see, Katie Golden. Um, so we've had a lot of luck with um, our youth doing crafts. Um, they're a very artistic group. Um, we've, I've been trying to have um, one session a month have a youth lead it and kind of do whatever that youth wants to do um, and so far every time a youth has led it they've led us in a craft so what we're doing is we're sending out um, fabric banners um, to our entire youth group um, where we're going to make a like separate fabric banner per principle oh. um, all for the eight principles. Um, and then I think that that's going to, there's gonna be probably at least one, um, but depending on how it goes, uh, maybe more youth group sessions where we're all just kind of like working on our banners from our own homes together. Mm -hmm. um, Cause our youth really like kind of working on things together online. Awesome, Katie. Yeah, way to go, both of you, with the what the kids want to do. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Heather, I think. Yes. Um, so um, just to go over really quickly what we did for the movie night, mm -hmm. um, shared over Zoom. Um, someone played it on their computer with the VLR video. Um, player mm -hmm. and um, you just have to look up your um, copyright laws we shared a movie that uh, that person already owned so that was how we got around that um, stay far away from Disney <laughs> um, and a lot of the streaming channels won't let you stream over zoom they give you too many troubles um, 
So just a few tips there is it's easier just to do a DVD you already own um, or something already on your computer. Um, and the other fun thing we're gonna be doing is, um, I'm sorry, I've got to bow out, sorry. Okay, Heather's taking her call and I believe, um, are we done or is it Mandy? I'm... I went. You went, that's what I thought. All right, great. Now comes the final part. We've got 10 minutes left in, an, in our hour. And what's fun is to say, okay, now that I've heard everyone, here's the takeaway or here's a solution that I might know. I'm tempted to jump in, but I'd love to hear your voices for solutions and takeaways. Um, Heather did that a little bit for us about showing movies. Um, so let's start with, I'll go from the bottom up this time. No, we'll do Sam first. We'll do Sam first. She's been so helpful. All right, Sam. <laughs> and let's do, uh, we've got 10 minutes, so one minute. Um. You know what? I don't think I have anything <laughs> to offer. There's been so much great stuff being shared and uh, it's been a really great session. So I think I will offer thanks. Thank you to everyone and all of your great ideas. Thank you, Sam. Carla, what's your takeaway solution? I think I'm just joining in the thanks with Sam and, um, and the crafts. So um, thanks to was it Katie Golden who mentioned crafts? Yeah, I think that's another thing I'd like to bring more into our youth program. Mm -hmm. All right, Macy, you're next on my screen now. Okay, um, yeah, I think, you know, for us, the thing that's been helpful is just offering more hands-on options during our sessions. And um, one of the first times we did something crafty with our youth too, they asked to do it again. So I think that was a good success. Um, I don't really have much advice for people, but I, again, thank you all. And Elisa. I, I, I think just, I, I am grateful to connect with you all and to, to just take the ideas. Um, Maybe a solution. One one thing that I've done um, is to just connect with a couple of other UU um, REs in the in the area. And even though they're working with a little, you know, more students, um, definitely got to we do we made vision boards, mm -hmm. um, which was an idea of one of uh, my colleagues there. That was that was good. I mean, that was a, a good session and hands on, and we're just able to do that just because we've got the ventilation sorted out in our fellowship hall. And um, so hands-on crafts, letters, we made little Christmas cookies um, and delivered them to our revered elders. And that was just people, just the people love that. So putting the love out there in a very hands-on way, maybe that's the part of our solution. Nice, thank you, Lisa. And Ashley. Also, thanks. And um, yeah, I love uh, crafts and um, the, uh, yeah, just just all the ideas presented. <laughs> and the cat in the Zoom window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK, thanks, Ashley. And Katie Carpen. Yeah, thanks. This is useful for me as I try to navigate ins and outs of the new system to get an idea of how different people are using it. Mm -hmm. Great. And Katie Golden. Um, I just really want to express gratitude for, um, uh, yeah, just uh, hearing um, other people in the same position I'm in and uh, just remembering that there's like a support system of other um, religious, educator, uh, religious educators is um, really a relief during these times. So thank you all. 
And thank you, Katie Golden, since you brought up all the crafts and people are definitely going with that, aren't you? Aren't they? Really my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. All right. And um, so Heather said, go ahead without her. She's just enjoying listening. And um, Mandy. Hi. Um, yeah, I guess I'm definitely hearing you about the, um, you know, the, the costs of a, a packet piece. And um, so I'm kind of wondering about something a little smaller scale, like in particular, Katie, thank you for sending out your um, sample of a packet. If there are folks who will be <clears throat> just interested to be in a small group that put together puzzle pages in advance of a month. I would love to uh, find a small group of people so that, you know, some of that responsibility could get rotated. And Mandy, as a little solution too, I would recommend you try that on our Facebook page. Say, oh yeah, I'm on the Facebook page. Yeah, to yeah. say, hey, what four people want to join me in making the next send out packet, you know, get Katie Golden up there. <laughs> Very cool. Um, that's it. And I have a, just a few minutes to close out. I wanted to share a couple of things. Some folks mentioned using Soulful Homes, uh, which is one of our offerings for a very small group. So Lisa, I wanted to mention that to you. People use Sofa Home instead of the, or in addition to sometimes both, big packet because they only have a few kids and it's more family oriented. Um, I, I really liked somebody, Katie's, I think one of the Katie's talking about getting the kids active and physical, maybe you Carla, when they're used to sitting in front of the TV. And I'm realizing this is a new skill set to us all to look at a TV, but it's interactive. You know, it's not just passive. See how I'm using my hands? It's not just passive watching TV, but it's interactive. And the and you know, the early Jimmy Fallon Tonight Show when they had a DJ and they did a dance party. I think that sort of broke open my awareness of what's possible with Zoom. Um, and yet for myself, I would never dance in front of a Zoom camera. <laughs> you know, I just, so I can feel what the kids are thinking. It's like, no way, Jose, or yeah, I'll dance. It depends on the kid, I guess. Um, let's see. Don't forget our Soul Matters lead with strategies. So, you know, if we can have other people leading with, like using the person who knows Dungeons and Dragons for the middle schoolers that Carla's doing, um, that's excellent because I'd much rather learn Dungeons and Dragons from my church than anything else. And so then I can go out into my friend's group and say, I know how to play Dungeons and Dragons. I think that's a really key thing. And we try to put a lead with strategy every time um, with some of those, those active things, the introduce it and the explore it so that it's not just you talking all the time. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Well, I guess that's that. Those are all my chicken scratch scratchings that I wrote down while you were talking. Um, I am have two minutes, and I'll share a little closing. Oh, kitty! Because isn't it nice to worship when we're always the orchestrators of worship? When we're always the ones doing it. I invite you to sit back and listen to this closing. This is by Reverend Dr. David Breeden here for beloved community. May, all, may I be all in for beloved community. 
May I be all in despite the challenges. May I be all here for beloved community. May I be ready for the beauty because I long for the possibilities. Yes, I am here for beloved community. May I see the beauty of you in community, of us in community. May we be the beauty of beloved community. May we be the dream together. That's in the Soul Matters Worship Packet. Oh, yes. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to stop the recording now for our online listeners. Bye, everybody there. And I'm going to stay on if you'd like to stay and chat.